Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. The NDAs or non-disclosure agreements that were set forth by NVIDIA for the GTX 1080 Founders Edition launch have finally lifted here on the 17th, despite the cards not actually coming out until the 27th. So that means we're starting to see performance numbers rolling in from various tech websites and other YouTubers out there who were, uh, you know, fortunate enough to be able to get hands-on with the 1080 prior to its public release. So I wanted to take a look at some of those numbers here with you guys today and see if they lived up to some of the claims being made by NVIDIA, like the one that said it was faster than 980s in SLI. So let's focus on the numbers here on that big claim though from NVIDIA, the 980s in SLI versus the GTX 1080. Now we can see the 980s in SLI are represented by the pink line here in the graph on PC Perspectives website versus the green line of the GTX 1080. So we can see that the 980s in SLI on Witcher 3 in 4K are beating the GTX 1080 by a very slight margin. Switching that over to 1440p, we could see again that the 980s in SLI are beating the GTX 1080 here. Pretty slight margin, but again, the, the uh, 980s and SLI are still winning, which would kind of go against what NVIDIA was saying by the 1080 being faster than two of these cards. I wanted to check out some other games, so here we got GTA 5 up here, also at 4K, once again, 980s and SLI beating the 1080, and here's the 3D Mark Fire Strike score. So we got 980s and SLI, this is the graphic score, getting 58 14 versus 49.93 of the GTX 1080, which is a pretty good test of just seeing the raw GPU horsepower there because the 3D Mark Fire Strike doesn't really tend to favor like one side or the other. It really just pushes your cards to their maximum potential and you can get a, a pretty raw number, which doesn't represent any actual performance that, you, that you're going to see in a game but it's a good way to just see the actual core performance of the graphics card and what it can do when it's completely unhinged in a benchmark like this, a controlled environment. And we see the 980s and SLI once again are winning. So I wanted to go over to Guru3D and I don't want to just check one website. So I went over to Guru3D's website where they did test the Witcher 3 in 980s SLI versus the 1080. And here at 1080p, 1440p and 4K, you can see the GTX 1080 actually beating the 980s in SLI, which goes completely against the numbers of PC perspective, which really had me, you know, thinking there. I was like, okay, well, why is that? So I went further into the rest of their numbers, and I found out that The Witcher 3 is actually the only game that Guru 3D decided to include the 980 SLI numbers on, and, and I don't know why they did that. I can only speculate to as to why, and my speculation is that they wanted to cherry-pick a benchmark to show the 1080 winning, whereas the other games, it probably wasn't winning. Even though on PC Perspectives... You know, it, the, the 1080s were still losing, but it was pr it was a pretty narrow margin. And I would contribute that to the fact that SLI doesn't really scale amazing in Witcher 3. I mean, the cards will get utilized, but you really won't get a massive boost in performance on that particular title. So seeing something like right here, like Rise of the Tomb Raider, where they can see the, the 1080 here, uh, let's look at 4K, getting 46 average FPS versus a Titan X and a 980 Ti, which are getting 38 and 37 average FPS respectively, which is a really, really good boost in performance on single on the single GPU side of things. That's about a 20% difference there, which is a really, like, a, I think that's a great improvement. So I don't want to, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, piss on the 1080s parade here. I think that the the percentages gained here on the single GPU are massive and definitely bigger than what we saw going from something like the 780 Ti to the GTX 980. And you know, we're seeing, you know, performance gains here from the 980 Ti and the Titan X to the 1080, which is like, you know, the full-fledged Maxwell chip. So that's definitely a bigger gain than I think we saw going from the full-fledged Kepler to the Maxwell initial releases with the 980 and 970. So still very impressive numbers here, but... Uh, based on the numbers we're seeing here from PC perspective, which I think are, are accurate compared to the ones of Guru 3D, um, the 980s and SLI are just flat out faster than a single GTX 1080. And that was also echoed, echoed in some other reviews that I did look at, like Paul's Hardware, and he did a really good uh, set of objective benchmarks. If you want to link to his video down in the description below, he did some really good numbers and tested his Arctic Panther build, which uses 980s and SLI versus the single 1080. And in his testing, the 980s and SLI were just smashing it. The 1080 just got smoked. Okay, so what about DirectX 12 performance? I brought up Tom's Hardware here who did do some testing on Ashes of the Singularity. They weren't the only guys that tested on it, but I like this page right here because it gives us a good analysis of not only Ashes of the Singularity on DirectX 12, but we can also see some numbers here from Battlefield 4, which is a DirectX 11 title. So 
I wanted to show you guys here, if you look at Ashes of the Singularity here at 2560 by 1440 on the Extreme preset, we see the 1080 getting an average of 66.1 FPS versus the 60.3 of Fury X. So that's a pretty close margin there on a DX12 title, you know, and given that it is actually a much larger gap on something like DX11, which shows me that NVIDIA is not getting as big a performance gain going to DX12 as something like even the Fury X, which is, you know, maybe on, on possibly on its way out when we do eventually see uh, Polaris GPUs coming out, unless they do stick with the Fury X for a little bit longer, which is something we've talked about previously on the channel. But still, I think that this, this shows that, you know, NVIDIA, while they have made some gains here, you know, on their on their async compute performance here we can see the titan x is getting 49 you know to 66.1 so they did get a huge leap there but nowhere near as big as the gap compared to the fury x that we see versus on like dx11 titles like here on battlefield 4 which is a game that scales very well so i have no doubt that it was fully utilizing the fury x and 1080 graphics card and we see the 1080 there just really just handing it its ass like what is that like 30 38 fps average increase there going from the fury x to the 1080 that's huge versus on dx12 where the difference is only 6 fps and I really do think going forward that DX12 is going to be one of the biggest battlegrounds that we're going to need to see these games tested on. It's one thing to see, you know, NVIDIA, you know, just trouncing AMD and DX11 titles on against the Fury X for a card that's been out for a little bit longer. But, you know, how are they going to really be able to handle async compute, which AMD has, has been known to do a lot better than NVIDIA. And, you know, async compute is really one of the big things I was waiting for here on the Pascal launch to see if they were going to be able to improve on that, you know, for us gamers. Last numbers I want to do look at here is on Gamers Nexus. They did a really good set of benchmarks here all on one page, conveniently enough for us. We can see the division benchmark 1080 versus 980. Ti Fury X at 4K 1440 and 1080p. We got the 1080 here up in the lead with the average FPS here of 51.3 and a minimum of 38.7, and that's at 4K. The Fury X there got an average of 42 FPS, actually beating out the 980 Ti, which got an average of 39.3. So it's nice to see that gain there. They're going between the 1080 and the 980 Ti reference model there. That's about, it's about a 20% increase in performance, which is pretty consistent across the board with most of the games we are seeing tested, at least on DX11, about a 20 to 25% increase of performance going from the 980 Ti and the Titan X to the GTX 1080. And that's echoed down here. We could see more Black Ops 3 testing here, average of 68 FPS versus the 51.7 of the 980 Ti. Unfortunately, don't, they don't have Titan X in here. Uh, coming down further from there, we've got GTA 5, 56 average FPS versus the 42.3, which was beating out the Fury X here on this particular benchmark over a Gamers Nexus. So overall, though, I'm, I'm really I'm really pleased with the performance we are seeing on the GTX 1080. I know I'm calling out some things here that maybe uh, kind of discredit some of the things that NVIDIA said, but these are still very impressive numbers here on the single GPU side of things, and I can't wait to see actual, you know, SLI numbers on something like the 1080 in DX11 as well as DX12, and I'm still going to be getting my ten, at least one 1080 and very likely two 1080s because, well, SLI. So just based on these numbers alone, is it worth upgrading if you are in the enthusiast class, you know, if you're already up on like a 980 or a 980 Ti? Um, you know, that's, that's really a question that a lot of people are going to have to answer for themselves based on the, you know, the resolution that they're playing at and the performance they're seeing and if they really need more performance. And if the answer for you is yes, I need more performance, then, then it's pretty simple really. You go out and you get a 1080. And, you know, now is kind of like the right time where you can sell your card uh, if you're on like a 900 series and you can get a decent amount of money back for it and then upgrade to a 1080 like I did um, but you know if you're on even an older card and you're sitting around waiting to upgrade at least we've got some numbers here now that you can look at and get an idea of you know how much more performance you can get on your older GPUs and let me know down in the comments below um, you know after seeing the actual numbers come in if you were sitting around waiting you know maybe with a 980 Ti or 980 or Fury X you know what is your plans now going forward? And especially if you're on SLI, I would be curi really curious to see people with like 980s and SLI, how they're going to feel about this because the numbers are fairly close between the two. And it's really impressive that the 1080 was able to put up as good a numbers as they are competing with the 980s and SLI, according to PC Perspectives numbers. But it was still it was still losing there on their numbers as well as Paul's hardware numbers, which is inconsistent with the numbers on Guru 3D that I pointed out to you guys. So yeah, let me know your feedback on all that down in the comments below, and uh, I'll catch you next time and see you down in the comments.